Do you ever see this? Let's see what we can do to fix that. We're going to move some of these wires around here so we get a good ground. We'll move this over to here. It'll be pinched in here. We're going to reverse this cable and then we're going to re rework a little bit of this so that we don't have all the extraneous wires going in underneath. And that'll allow maximum current flow here into here. So the, and this is actually going to get flipped over as well. And then this main wire here is actually going to come down over to the starter post instead of being on here. So. And uh, that actually small mod just makes a little bit of difference on uh, how, uh, how well it flows current. And you can see this, you know, the serrated washer. Basically, they had the serrated washer right here on top of the ground, where it, in essence, this is all this is on top of the ground, which basically prevents one side of the ground from carrying anything. So we'll tighten all that up as well. You see on top of the relay right here. So this is the main starter wire, of course. This is the power wire here for the um, for the primary power for the systems, and so it's sitting on here, and there's really no flat surface. So we're going to clean this up, and so what we're going to end up doing is uh, this is going to get actually moved over to the starter uh, relay face because there's a lot better contact surface on the starter relay. This will go back down on here, and then I'll end up putting a couple of washers on both sides of it on the lock washer, which will tighten all that up. And that actually adds quite a bit of current carrying capabilities. So I'm going to take a uh, 96516 thick washer here, and I'm actually going to put it against this uh, plated post here to, to help it to carry some more current. I'm going to put one on the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. And what I'm going to happen here is this, this wire is actually going to get reversed. And the reason it's easier because it's all together under here and it's just easier to flip it. So I'll end up flipping it around. So I'm going to rework that and then I'll show you that in a second. They're mated. When I had them all ago, they were actually upside down. So we're gonna we're gonna flatten this out like this. One relay. For some strange reason, these posts on these uh, main relays are just not. They just don't carry as much current. So we want to make sure that we get all the contact we can. That's why everything's down here. These are pretty robust starter relay. They've been used a long time, and and uh, the posts are real strong. With these. And like I said, it's a lot easier to just have one wire on each one of these and no extra wires like this. This is costing us here, so this will go down onto the uh, battery here shortly. So, Unfortunately, the lock washer doesn't do you any good other than just keeping it tight for spring pressure, but it does no good for carrying current. So it kind of hoses you in the long run. So there's that. I've got good solid contact and good faces on everything and that's really about the best you can do with it. Nice and tight, covered everything up. Now you see main wire, this is 70 amp power wire. It's on the face of the starter relay which is actually still on the hot side of the main relay. This is the battery. Again this is the main relay circuit breaker for the master relay which is why it's only a little 5 amp deal but again the Aviat uses these are hot and a lot of airplanes what they'll do is they'll float the ground off this use this is not a floating ground relay but they'll float the ground off this and then they'll run the ground through and up and that way you have a dead switch all the time but they chose to use this older relay which is a grounding relay just like the one on your tractor or anything else Unfortunately, that's the right washer actually already because uh, the problem is it's so short that I won't be able to get it on there. This is the ELT ground and so we're going to move this off this and we're just going to move it over here to the starter because it's not that critical where it's grounded. So this is the main ground strap for the motor right here and I just happened to actually pull on it and it's loose. See it moves real easy. 
and it's oily. So we're gonna have to pull that off. We're gonna have to clean that. Uh, that's the main ground for the motor. So without that, it won't uh, start. And oftentimes that's more of the problem than the long starter cable. We'll clean that baby up with mineral spirits. Put a little sand action on it, get it all clean. And then we'll look at the mounts again. Okay, all done, there we go. And see, we've also routed the cable from the front behind because of the power flow, the exhaust comes kind of right in here. And so we uh, move a couple things back and uh, this will get actually pulled around behind when Paul does all that uh, power flow stuff. But that keeps the ground cable back out of the way. And it also, it floats, it completely floats. It's not touching anything now. Kind of self-critiquing, so little tricks. So looking down inside here, you can see that I flipped the main wire and I flipped the starter wire and then I put double washers underneath everything. The only thing missing right now is the ground wire which we will put on when we're all done and then I'll put that on right here and I've sanded that face right there and then down here we've cleaned up the ground and the ground wire is sitting outside and there's nothing on the ground wire beyond that so and that's a good grounding spot. It's as good as we're going to get. Mm -hmm.